I feel like I just want to do this whole video super close up because hey, look at my eyeshadow. It's so cute. In case it wasn't clear, I'm very excited for Pride Month. <laughs> channel where we talk all things books all the time. My name is Nogu Kanya, your resident book nerd, book lover, wearer of fur coats indoors because hey, it's cold outside and this outfit is very, very cute. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things books all the time. Welcome if it's your first time here, welcome back if you're an OG and you've been with me for a while. So today's video is going to be something I do every month, my roundup of my most anticipated releases for June, but with a little twist. Because it's Pride Month, all of the books that I'm going to talk about are all going to be queer lit books. So this is my most anticipated queer releases for June 2021. I actually was going through this. I think obviously like publishers have, obviously like publishers like other corporations have jumped on Pride as a huge marketing tool, but there are a lot of queer lit books coming out this month. And there's a couple that I'm really, really excited. Actually, I think this is probably the first what's this thing um rundown of my anticipated releases where i'm like literally gagging for everything i think there's like 10 of them and all of these books i'm so excited about there's a couple that are not queer led but i decided not to include them in this video you probably see them on instagram if i decide to talk about them or pick them up but this video is going to be all things queer all the time so yeah let's jump straight into it my most anticipated queer lit releases for june 2021 Oh, also, some light admin while we're here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram on at PrettyXBookish. Like, comment, follow, share. Tell everybody to subscribe to my channel. You guys know the drill. So yeah. I'm sorry, guys. This eyeshadow is just so bomb. Ah! <laughs> okay, so anticipated releases. So I have my trusty phone over here. Let me unlock it. Have my list of books that I'm going to talk to you guys about. So the first one is going to come as no surprise to anyone because literally it's been on Bookstagram all over the place. So her first release, everybody's obsessed with it. Like it's one of the Bookstagram faves. And the first book is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I know, super cliche, but I love Red, White and, Red, White and Royal Blue. It is so so cute it is so good i mean henry has a little piece of this little heart of mine so i'm really excited for casey mcquiston's second release i also like that she's going in the same like queer direction but in a slightly different avenue she's not doing um m and m again and i think the main character is a girl so i'm excited to see what she's gonna do with this one I hear that it's very cute. I hear like it's got the romance and the love story is so great. I've seen, so, uh, like one of the people I found on Instagram is Greg and he's been posting a couple of excerpts from the book and it just seems like really funny and really cute and really vibey. And I like the whole meeting, your, your like your crush on the train vibes. Cause when I lived in London, like I also low key, I had like a crush on this guy on the tube on like my specific, no on the bus on my specific um, route because like I used to take the bus to campus at the same time like every day. Anyway, that's like, you don't need to know that. But I think that's such a cute premise. I've read, read one book. Um, it's called Our Stop. It was horrible. So I don't know why I'm mentioning it. But I think it's such a cute thing. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Apparently it's giving you very a lot of romance, a lot of found family vibes. And I love a found family vibes. I love a cast of characters that come with like the funny and the banter and the romance and the cute love story and the accepting yourself. So this is one of those books that I'm really excited about. Um, disclaimer, I've already ordered it. I ordered it the second it came out. It's just like I'm shooting this video late because you guys know like I'm I invented chaos But I've already ordered it so you guys should look forward Hopefully it'll arrive by the end of the month so I can still include it in my June reads But one last stuff definitely really really ready for it So the other book that I'm so excited to get is another second book by an author who I absolutely loved You guys know I love Mason Diva I love I Wish You All The Best So The Ghosts We Keep by um, Mason Diva is the second book So this one is giving me big time crying snot crying vibes so it's about a boy who his brother passed away his older brother and he's basically grieving over his brother and then he's kind of trying to navigate the space after his brother and people telling you know people tell you things like oh everything happens for a reason like and i just feel like i'm gonna cry i'm very close to my brother like my brother's my best friend i love him to death and i feel like oh i feel like i'm gonna cry when i read this it's giving me and then she he kind of connects with his older brother's friends whose name is i think his name is marcus and basically they're the only two people who really can understand Understand the level of grief um, for losing his brother so I just oh god like it's giving me it's giving me queer love story or queer relationship vibes but also with the side order of crying your eyes out and you know what 
fine. It's fine. I can, I, I don't mind crying. So we'll just watch Mason Diva's thing and just like ball ourselves to sleep. And it's just, it's okay. It's okay. We'll be okay. <laughs> like it's one of those books where you feel like you're going to read it and be like, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine. Nothing is happening here. So yeah, I'm excited for that one because I really did love I Wish You All The Best and Mason Diva is a forever fave of mine. So that's the second one that I'm really excited about. So the other one that I'm really excited about that I also already ordered, like last night I was like, fuck it, I want it. So I ordered it already, is a book called The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schrieffer. So it's giving me very sci-fi vibes. For some reason, I thought of Illuminae when I heard about it. So what I understand, what I grasped from the general synopsis of the book is that different countries in the world sent two representatives to space or whatever because some colony person first people on some colony called titan or whatever sent a distress signal so nobody can afford to send their own spaceship so these two guys end up on a spaceship together um they wake up one of them has no memories they don't know what's going on they're like now stuck on space on the spaceship don't know what's going on they're uncovering things honey they're realizing things while they're up there but they're also low-key falling in love and then like but they're sworn enemies so it's like very enemies to lovers feuding countries i think but then low-key queer love queer romance set in space it has a lot of elements and i feel like it's gonna be a vibe i've been trying to dip my toe into sci-fi as said this several times but like i feel like this is the kind of sci-fi i can get behind because i feel like it's gonna be more focused on like it's gonna it's giving me illuminate vibes in the sense of like there's a conspiracy there's an undercurrent of like something you need to discover but also like i'm here for the romance i'm here for the dark and brooding in space romance thing that's gonna happen so i've already ordered it so you guys should look out for that in a wrap-up coming to cinemas near you very soon <laughs> So the other book that's coming out, oh guys, I'm so, you can see like I have the biggest smile on my face, this, this video, because everything is just, I'm so jeed, is a book called Playing the Palace by Paul Rudnick. So very much giving me red, white, and royal blue vibes. So what I understand is that the one character, he's a Prince of Wales, and then the other character is basically like some New York something. I don't know what he does. Like he's an, I think he's an American, but like, he's like a regular dude and basically starts falling, falls in love and starts dating the Prince of Wales. So very red, white, and royal blue vibes, except for the fact that like no one is the president's son, but it's giving me very, it's giving me very like a reimagining of Meg, Meghan and Harry just with queer characters and just set with a younger age group. It's giving me very wide a romance vibe so I, I i'm excited i love british banter i love romance books that are set in the uk because i just feel find the banter to be fantastic like the boyfriend material like uh, loves it that's why even on red white and royal blue henry is my favorite because like uk banter is top top two top two and not number two so playing the palace is another one that oh it looks so cute i'm so excited for that one as well Okay, so the next one is also a book two um, of a writer. And this one is was a book, book one was a bookstagram fave. I didn't love it so much. I liked the premise, but the execution wasn't my favorite. You guys know how I felt about um, Cinderella story. I think that's what it's called. Cinderella is dead. Um, so the next one is The Poison Heart by Callan Barron. Um, look. I thought that Callan Barron's first book was such a solid attempt at a debut. I thought there were a couple of things that weren't, that didn't hit as much for me. But I did say when I reviewed Cinderella, I said that I am definitely going to get The Poison Heart because I really, really liked that. I like the premise of reimagining fairy tales. I can't remember. I've read The Secret Garden because I think this is based off of The Secret Garden. I know I've read it. I can't remember anything about it, but I know I've read it because we all had to read it in primary school. So I think maybe I actually must Google what the plot is. But... This one looks really good. I just want to see how she does. And I think maybe she will have executed better the second time around. So I'll keep you guys posted. But this is another one that I'm excited about that's coming out this month. Okay, so the next book is slightly outside of my comfort zone. It's not my typical book. But for some reason, I'm really, I'm really excited about this. So it's a book called Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iunize. So it is dark academia with a thriller mystery undercurrent vibes. So it is set at I think like an elite boarding school or something and it explores themes of like institutional racism apparently it's giving very get out vibes like a, a, an a, like a thriller undercurrent of like menace in an instant in an in, in a predominantly all white institution i think the two main characters are only two black people in the school or something like that so it's like very like institutional racism is it there is it not there you know the whole gaslighting vibe that happens in those spaces so that book i'm excited about i'm not a hundred percent sure how it's queer but i also low-key don't want to know until i read it like i've but i've seen a lot, a lot of queer 
a lot of people is, have, have put it on queer lists of queer releases for this month so i'm trusting the people who have read it that it is actually queer lists. i'm not 100 percent sure and i also don't want to know really because i want to be able to dive into it without a lot of information because i know with um these violent delights by chloe gong it was a pleasant surprise for me that it ended up having queer rep and the queer rep was actually so well executed. So I liked that it snuck up on me and I wasn't 100% like I didn't know that that book had queer rep. So that's why I'm kind of hoping Ace of Spades does a little something like that for me where I get a character, even if it's like secondary characters, like best friend characters, secondary people who have like bomb ass queer rep. So that's another one that I'm excited about that's coming out this month. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay, the next one, I am very excited about this one. I just stumbled across it. So it's a book called 1500 Miles from the Sun by Johnny Garza Villa. So it's about two boys. So obviously it's a queer love story, queer um, coming of age, Bulldogs Roman, if you will. Hey, English major. Every time I say Bulldogs Roman, I just feel like such, an, such, a, such a gentleman and a scholar. But anyway, so this boy, I think, what's his name? Julian Luna. He has a plan. He has a plan to get into UCLA, to move out of his town, graduate, you know, get his life together. Really the dream and then he, i think he accidentally outs himself and so now his life kind of starts spiraling i think he accidentally outs himself on twitter or something and then his life starts spiraling, spiraling whatever and he's trying to navigate all of this and then he's kind of like stressed about it but also low-key like okay i'm out of the closet now so i can actually just like try and live my best life and then he has this like crush on a guy called matt like a twitter crush who reaches out to be like oh hey i'll be there for you and then they kind of but they live 1500 miles away so when julian really starts to struggle they have to he has to navigate like like not having his support system trying to trying to accept be accepted for who he is and stuff like that so sounds really good right i feel like this is going to be a good one as well it sounds like such a great i think the love story is going to be good i'm really next we have a book that i'm pretty sure is going to make me ugly cry but it is what it is and that is dear synthurin by akweki amezi so they just wrote a memoir so this is their new memoir that is apparently hella harrowing apparently it's very very emotionally taxing i've seen a bunch of people who've read um advanced readers copies who've said like it's very it's very good it's very raw and very honest but it also is, it's like really emotionally taxing and i'm just like i mean here we go the thing is they haven't written a bad book that i've read so far i really love death of vivek orgy pet was really good i haven't read fresh water yet but like all of their books have been solid and i love that the fact the fact that they have branched out into so many different like genres they did ya they did fiction now they're doing memoir and i know that they have been signed to do a romance book that's coming out pretty soon like i think in 2022 or 2023 so i mean yeah i'm here for all of um aquakia mezi um so yeah i just love them they're phenomenal like also and their instagram is fantastic like okay so then so the next book that's coming out like i'm excited about this book but i was excited about his first book and then i ended up i'm only reading it now so we'll see and that is filthy animals by brandon taylor it's a short story collection i've seen a bunch of people read it and say it was really, really good i can't really say anything about this book i'm just excited about it because everybody raves about it but i haven't read real life so i can't really speak to whether or not brandon taylor is a great writer but i I'm 90% sure I'm going to end up ordering this book um, because I'm actually, I have real life on my side table now. So hopefully I'll be done in some semblance of a, the near future. Hopefully I'll have this in a wrap up because this has also been in a lot of possibility piles. Like it's embarrassing, but hopefully this will be done soon. So um, Filthy Animals is the other book that I'm actually excited about that's coming out this month. What was the other one? I just, I just remembered one now in my head. Um, listen, the next one, the blurb of this book on the internet, literally, I was like, so ding, 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 ding. So it says a cross between or a com like basically love Simon meets Friday Night Lights. Are you kidding? Do you know how much I love Friday Night Lights? Anyway, so the book is called The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimmons. It's a trans story. So um, the character's name, the main character's name is Spencer. So Spencer is trans and he was bullied at his previous school. When he moves to his new school, he's kind of passing and nobody knows that he's trans. And then he, I think he's plays, I don't know if it's football or or soccer i think it's football it's, it's the us it's always football 
Um, and then he, his coach finds out that he has an F still on his birth, birth certificate and they basically won't let him play. So now he's stuck between whether he wants to fight for his dream to be able to play and his right to be able to play um, sports, um, boy sports, or... And or uh, which which would mean he'd have to come out to the guy he has a crush on and also just like to his whole school when he had such a bad experience or if he should just leave it. And I think it's a really, it's going to be an interesting story because I think even with the, con the broad conversation within but about trans um, children, especially in high school and their ability to play sports, but even professional athletes, it's very topical right now. Um, the rubbish people are rubbishing all over it and talking absolute nonsense. And I think it's such an important story to tell. So this one I'm very excited about. I feel like this is going to be good. Like guys, I am obsessed with Friday Night Lights. You have no idea. I think like if I had been born in the US, I am 100% sure I would be born in the South and I would be from Texas and I would be like a big football fan. I feel like I, because I, the only sport I like right now is rugby be in life and I feel like if I'd been born in football country I would be like a huge football fan I'd be like that girl who was like painting half her face out here obviously dating the quarterback <laughs> or a linebacker I don't know the difference I know what a quarterback is I'm not really sure I know what a linebacker is isn't a tight end the one where they're bigger if the bigger ones are the tight ends, that's what I would be. <laughs> like, I literally have not, know nothing about that sport, except that there's a thing called a quarterback because Chad Michael Murray was the quarterback in a Cinderella story. Hey. <laughs> okay, so the last book, I'm going to sneakily sneak this in. It's not a queer book, but I have to talk about it. Long Division by Kiesi Lehman. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Kiesi. His book Heavy literally is one of the best memoirs I've ever, ever, ever read. And I say everybody has to read it. He has a novel, a fiction novel called Long Division that's coming out. I think it came out on the 1st of June. I am so ready to get this book. I have no idea what the plot point is. I don't know what it's about. What I do know, though, is that Kiesi is gold, and I love him, and every time he speaks at an event, he just, like, literally, I want to cry every time he talks. Like, he just rips my soul open <laughs> every time. So I can't wait to read this book. Um, Tracy read it, and I think she, she said it was really good. So that's the other book that I just kind of want to sneak in there, even though I said I'm only going to do queer books, but whatever. I love Kiesi. We stand Kiesi in this house, so we will always, always take the time to talk about him. Okay! So that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Those are my most anticipated queer lit releases for June 2021, aka Pride Month. I hope you guys found this video instructive. Let me know in the comments if you're looking forward to any of these, if you guys have actually gotten advanced copies, read any of them, what you thought. I will let you guys know as soon as I get these because I probably will order all of these. I'm a huge fan of queer YA and queer lit in general. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram on at prettyxbookish. Like, comment, follow, share, all that fun stuff. You guys know the drill. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoy your day. Bye. I'm going to go lie down in my fur coat and just have like chocolate milk now. So... Mm -hmm.